Malcolm Training Tutorials, Configuration, Hedgehog Linux. In the previous video, you learned how to install Hedgehog Linux. In this video, we will walk you through configuring interfaces, hostname and time synchronization, configuring capture and configuring forwarding. This will help your sensors to start capturing network traffic and forwarding metadata about that traffic to a Malcolm server. Step 1. Configuration. How to configure interfaces, hostname, and time synchronization. There are two steps for configuring your Hedgehog sensors. The first step is enabling Hedgehog to be able to communicate with Malcolm by configuring its network interfaces, the hostname, and time synchronization. For this process, you will need your Hedgehog and Malcolm devices running. Let's start off by configuring our network interfaces first. Navigate to the toolbar at the top of the desktop and click the Configure Interfaces and Hostname Toolbar icon. This is an icon of a network cable being plugged into a socket. You can also access the Setup tool from the command line prompt by running Configure-Interfaces. Next, you will be prompted to enter a password. This is the privileged root password you set up during installation. After entering your password, select the Continue button. Now we are ready to configure the sensor's IP address. We are going to set up two interfaces. One interface will be our management interface, which will be used to communicate with Malcolm, and the other interface will be our capture interface, which will passively listen to traffic. First, let's set up your management interface. From the menu, select Interface, configure an interface's IP address. After selecting this option, the setup wizard will then ask if you need help identifying any of your network interfaces. This may not be useful in a virtual machine environment. However, this can be very helpful in a hardware environment. For instance, this feature can help distinguish between network interfaces when the sensor has more than one. Hedgehog will list the physical network interfaces. If you need help identifying one of the interfaces on the list, you can select that interface by name and choose OK. When you select Ready on the next screen, the blink light on the interface you've selected will blink for 10 seconds to identify itself. Simultaneously, a 10-second countdown will appear on the screen. You will be asked again if you need help identifying any other network interface cards or NICs. If you do not need help, select No. You will now be asked which interface you want to configure as the sensor management interface. After selecting the interface, you will be asked how the management interface will be assigned an IP address. You can select static or DHCP. If you select DHCP or dynamic IP, an IP address will automatically be selected for you by the DHCP server on the network. Whether your sensor uses static or dynamic IP addresses is dependent on your network environment and requirements. We recommend using a static IP address for the sensor so that its address is fixed and will not change when its DHCP address lease expires. If you select static, you will need to enter the IP address, net mask, and gateway for the management interface. You will most likely want to assign the sensor an IP address in the same subnet as the Malcolm server. If you are unsure about the Malcolm server's IP address, you can find it by right-clicking on the Network Manager icon with the two monitors in the system tray of your Malcolm desktop. When the menu opens, select Connection Information. There you can find the networking information for the wired connection of the Malcolm server. When you return to the Hedgehog setup, enter an IP address that is in the same subnet as Malcolm. After configuring the management interface, the network interface will be brought down, configured, brought back up, and the result of the operation will be displayed. Now we are going to set up the capture interface that will passively listen to traffic. From the configuration mode menu, you will select interface and select OK. If you need help identifying your interfaces again, then you can select yes, otherwise select no. Select the interface you want to use as your capture interface, then select OK. Since you are not using the capture interface to communicate, you will select Manual No IP and then select OK. The following message will confirm that you do not have an IP associated with your capture interface. Select OK to confirm. Now you've set up your management and capture interfaces. After configuring your management and capture interfaces, you will need to configure the host name. The host name is a way to identify a computer to other computers on the network. The next screen will show you what the current host name is set to, along with identifying information about the system. 
Select OK. Enter a host name for your sensor and select OK. Your host name is now configured. Other computers will now know the sensor by the name you have selected. Select OK. Next, we need to synchronize the time of your hedgehog sensors with a network time protocol or NTP server, a local Malcolm aggregator, or another HTTP or HTTPS server. Synchronizing the time is a way for you to make sure that the system date and time of network sensors are synced with the Malcolm instance. If your organization uses NTP, then you can point it at an NTP server in your network to use as your source of time. You will need to select NTP and enter the IP address or the host name of your NTP server when prompted. If you want to use Malcolm as the source of time, you will need to enter the URL for the Malcolm server. If you can't recall the IP address from earlier, return to the Malcolm desktop, right-click the network manager icon from the system tray, select connection information, and find the IP address for the Malcolm server. Afterwards, return to the Hedgehog desktop, select HTTP date, enter the HTTPS URL containing the IP address for the Malcolm server when prompted. Select OK. The next prompt box will ask you how often the Hedgehog sensor should check if the time sync is correct. We suggest staying with the default 15-minute configuration, meaning that the sensor will verify its system's date and time match up with that of the Malcolm server every 15 minutes. Step 2. Capture. How to configure your hedgehog to capture traffic. From the hedgehog desktop, select Configure Capture and Forwarding, which is the icon of the two in the toolbar. First, we will set up how the hedgehog will capture traffic, then we will configure how it forwards information about that traffic to a Malcolm server, and finally we will select which services will run when hedgehog starts. Let's begin the first step of configuring capture. Select Configure Capture from the Configure Capture and Forwarding menu. If you don't need help identifying network interfaces, select No. This brings us to our list of network interfaces. We need to select which interface we want to capture traffic on. We don't want to capture traffic on the management interface we configured earlier, because that would include the sensor's own traffic between itself and the Malcolm server. This would be like you wiretapping your own phone. We'll go ahead and select the other network interface, the one we configured to operate without an IP address, to be our capture interface. After you've selected the capture interface, you will be asked if there is any traffic you want the sensor to filter out or ignore. If you leave this blank, then the Hedgehog sensor will capture all the traffic it observes on the capture interface. However, there may be an instance where you have specific traffic that is noisy or that you don't want to consume the sensor's disk space to store. If you want to filter out specific traffic, you can define a capture filter according to the standard of the Berkeley packet filter syntax used by TCP Dump, Wireshark, and similar tools. Now we need to choose where to store the captured network traffic artifacts like PCAP and log files. These storage locations are automatically populated by Hedgehog based on available storage detected at the time of installation. Next, you will be asked if you are using this to monitor an operational technology, OT, or Industrial Control Systems Network, ICS. If you know the network you're monitoring uses Industrial Control Systems protocols, select Yes. Otherwise, select No. If you selected Yes to the previous question, this follow-up question asks if you would like the Hedgehog sensor to attempt to identify additional OT or ICS traffic that it's not 100% sure about. This best guess can help flag industrial control systems protocols that Malcolm doesn't yet have full support for, which could also result in more false positives. This next section brings us to file carving mode. As Hedgehog monitors network traffic, it can identify file transfers and scan those files for malicious content. Here we specify which types of files should be analyzed. Each of these options are described in more detail in the Malcolm documentation. For now, we suggest you choose Interesting, which will extract and examine files that are commonly used for malware distribution. Once you've selected your carving mode, select OK. After selecting OK, you will need to select the scanners you want to use to scan incoming files. You can learn more about these scanners from the File and Extraction Scanning section in the Malcolm documentation. We recommend you select Kappa, ClamAV, and Yora while leaving VirusTotal unselected. After selecting your scanners, you will need to decide if you would like to preserve any of the carved files. 
Quarantined means that Hedgehog will only save files that triggered one of the scanning tools. For example, one of the files Hedgehog scanned had a virus in it. Hedgehog can preserve or quarantine that file for you to review later. If you would rather Hedgehog preserves all of the files it scans, select all. Alternatively, if you do not wish to preserve any of the files locally on the sensor, select none. Next, you will be asked if you would like to zip the preserved files when they are downloaded via Hedgehog's web interface. This web interface is described under the Automatic File Extraction and Scanning section in the Malcolm documentation. It's a good idea for you to zip the extracted files that may be downloaded using this interface and to secure them with a password to prevent accidentally infecting yourself as these files may contain live malware. You can use any password here, but it is common practice within the cybersecurity community to use infected as the default password for this type of archive. The next screen will summarize the settings you've configured so far. Select OK. Step 3. Forwarding. How to forward information from Hedgehog to Malcolm. Next, we need to set up forwarding in order to get the information the Hedgehog sensor captures to the Malcolm server. To get started, select Configure Forwarding from the Configuration Mode menu. There are different options for setting up Configure Forwarding. These options include configuring ArcME session forwarding via ArcME Capture, configure ZeekLog forwarding via FileBeat, configure miscellaneous sensor metrics forwarding via FileBeat, configure ACL for artifact reachback from Malcolm, and receive client SSL files for FileBeat from Malcolm. The Malcolm documentation goes into further detail about each option. We are going to select SSL client receive first. Malcolm uses certificate files to communicate with Hedgehog and validate the trust between each other. This process will help us make sure that Hedgehog has the files it needs to identify itself with Malcolm before we set up the other forwarding options. You will be asked to enter the IP address of the Malcolm server and a one-time use code phrase. This code phrase is generated by the Malcolm server. On the Malcolm desktop, open a terminal, navigate to the Malcolm directory by typing cd Malcolm and run the following command period forward slash scripts forward slash auth underscore setup. Once in the auth utility, choose TXFW certs, then select OK. After a moment, the code phrase will be generated. This will be a one-time use secret code that Malcolm and Hedgehog will use to securely transfer the certificate files. Leave the Malcolm desktop and return to the Hedgehog sensor. Enter the Malcolm IP address followed by the code phrase. After you select OK, you can see the two communicating as the certificate files are transferred. Now you have the files the Hedgehog can use to forward logs to Malcolm. Now we'll return to configure forwarding and set up the rest of the configuration options. Let's set up ArcME Capture. This screen asks you how ArcME will connect to the OpenSearch or Elasticsearch database used by Malcolm. There are two options, HTTPS and HTTP protocol. We'll go with HTTPS since it is more secure and we'll select None when prompted about SSL certificate verification, since by default Malcolm uses self-signed certificates. Enter your Malcolm's IP address when prompted. You can leave the default port number and select OK. ArcME needs a username and password that we configured on the Malcolm side. If you do not have a username and password for the Hedgehog to use, you can go to the Malcolm desktop Navigate to the local account management interface and log in with your Malcolm administrator credentials. From here, you can create or update users. You'll use one of these accounts for the ArcME capture process on Hedgehog to connect to Malcolm. Once you've obtained a username and password, return to the Hedgehog desktop. Enter the username and then enter the password on the following screen. Hedgehog will attempt to communicate with Malcolm using the address and credentials provided and inform you if that test communication was successful. Hit Enter to select the defaults for the next few questions. The setup wizard will present you with a list of the options we've configured for ArcME. Select OK. Next, we'll configure forwarding Zeek and Suricata logs with FileBeat. Select FileBeat. It will prompt you for the directory containing these logs. This directory should already be populated for you by default. We'll select OK to continue. Next, you will be asked how FileBeat will connect to Malcolm. You'll enter your Malcolm IP address again and choose the default port number. Select OK. 
You will then be asked if you would like to forward information through SSL or unencrypted. We suggest forwarding through SSL because it is more secure. Our instance of Malcolm is using a self-signed certificate, so we can accept the default when prompted about SSL certificate verification by selecting None. The next screen will show paths and file names of the certificates you transferred from Malcolm to the sensor a few moments ago. Select OK to use those certificates. You will again be shown a summary of the file B forwarding options we've configured. Select OK. Next, we will configure miscellaneous beat, which is used to forward sensor metrics. Hedgehog can report its health and status to Malcolm, including its hardware temperatures, storage utilization, and CPU and memory usage. Select the defaults that are carried over from the file beat configuration to accept those same values for miscellaneous beat. The last thing we need to configure is the access control list. Some network artifacts, such as PCAP payloads and extracted files, can be retrieved by Malcolm from the sensor. We want to ensure that it's just Malcolm that's allowed to perform this action. Select OK. The IP address for our Malcolm instance is pre-populated on the screen. Check that the address listed here is the IP address that should be allowed to contact the Hedgehog sensor to retrieve these artifacts, then select OK. The last step in configuring the Hedgehog Linux network sensor is to specify which processes will run when the sensor starts up. You can find a detailed description of these auto start services in the Malcolm documentation under the Hedgehog Linux configuration section. We suggest enabling all of them except for net sniff ng and TCP dump. If your sensor does not have internet connectivity, you should also leave clam AV updates and suricata updates disabled. However, we encourage you to take a moment to review the documentation and enable the ones that best fit your needs. Select OK once you've made your selections. The next screen will give you a summary of the services you've selected. The services marked true are the ones that will automatically run when the sensor starts. Select OK to apply changes. After selecting OK, exit the configuration wizard and reboot the sensor. When you start back up, you will return to the kiosk page. The capture and forwarding processes will automatically start in the background. That concludes configuring Hedgehog Linux. In this video, we learned how to configure capture and forwarding. Check out the description section for links to the Malcolm GitHub site, a Malcolm discussion forum, and more.